The Battle of Clastidium was fought in 222 BC between a Roman Republican army led by the Roman consul Marcus Claudius Marcellus, and the Incibers. Florus writes that the Incibers were led by Viridimarus, or Britomartus, as the name varies in translation. The Romans won the battle, and in the process, Marcellus earned the Spolia Apima, one of the highest honors in ancient Rome, by killing the king in single combat. It was also notable as one of the few battles won by the Roman cavalry without any aid by the legions. Chapter 1 Background After the successful campaign of consuls Publius Furius Philus and Gaius Flaminius in 223 BC against the Incibers, the latter sent out ambassadors begging for peace to the Roman Senate. The new consuls Marcus Claudius Marcellus and Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio Calvus however strongly urged that no peace should be granted to them. On meeting with a refusal, the Incibers decided to fight to the last and hired a force of 30,000 Gisati mercenaries to aid their cause. The Roman consuls, when the war season came, invaded the territory of the Incibers with their legions, and laid siege to the city of Asuri, nowadays in the area of Pizzigetone, between Cremona and Lodi. The Incibers could not come to the assistance of the besieged, as the Romans had occupied all the advantageous positions around the city. But with the object of making the latter raise the siege, they crossed the Po with part of their forces, and entering the territory of the Annas, laid siege to a town there called Clastidium. On the consul's learning of this, Marcellus set off in haste with two-thirds of his cavalry, and a small body of his fittest infantry to relieve the besieged. He left Gnaeus with most of the army to maintain the siege of Asuri. Chapter 2 Battle The Celts, as soon as they were aware of the enemy's arrival, raised the siege and advanced to meet them, drawn up in order of battle. In response Marcellus led his squadrons of cavalry forward and tried to outflank them, extending his wings into a thin line, until he was not far from the enemy. His horse however were temporarily seized with panic and turned away from the Gallic line, which fortunately he was able to convert into a spectacle of dedication to the gods. He then vowed that he would consecrate to Jupiter Ferritrius the most beautiful suit of armor among them. Meanwhile, Viridimarus had ridden out in front of his men and issued a challenge for single combat to the Roman consul. Marcellus accepted and promptly galloped at his opponent, unhorsing him on his first pass with his lance. He then dispatched Viridimarus with two more thrusts, before dismounting to strip his fallen foe of his beautiful bejeweled armor. Encouraged, the Roman cavalry charged at the Gallic horse and foot, who at first stood firm but afterwards, being taken both in the rear and on the flank, were put to rout. Thousands of Gauls were killed in the pursuit, many drowning in the Po. Chapter 3 Aftermath. Encouraged by the victory the Romans took a Surrey shortly afterward, while the demoralized Gauls retreated to Mediolanum, the largest city of the Incibers. Gnaeus followed close on their heels, and suddenly appeared before Mediolanum. The Gauls at first did not stir, but, when he was on his way back to a Surrey, they sallied out, and made a bold attack on his rear, which were only beaten off with difficulty. Gnaeus, following them, laid waste the country and took Mediolanum itself by assault, upon which the chieftains of the Incibers lost all hope and surrendered unconditionally. Thus the Romans succeeded in conquering the largest independent Celtic tribe in Italy, and firmly established their hegemony over the Po Valley, then the most productive agricultural region in the peninsula.